What's up, YouTube? Now, this time we can take care of the second part of our series on uh, the throwback to the 2017 Formula 1 season. In this part 2, we can take care of every single race from Austria all the way to Abu Dhabi. Finally to end the season in our uh, two-part throwback to the 2017 season as the 2018 season will uh, start next March. The end of next March. And yeah, you know the drill with it. The game that we're going to play today, I know it perfectly. So there's no um, case on saving time on it. So I'm just, I'm just losing time and using that time sure. lost to to you know talk about yeah, the moments the of last season that were relevant let's get on with it hey doc you all right you're a little stressed out oh, it's not easy being the only doctor in town these days i sure could use a little help around the office well good luck with that hold on you don't look too busy. Why don't you come into my office and give me a little help? Get ready. Patients are going to be coming in soon. And I need you to be prepared. Uh, Doc, my background's in racing, remember? Yeah, well, so is mine. Now, come on. Press and hold down the mouse button to drag the little pieces of hardware out of the car's tailpipes. You can make the whole screen slide over by moving the mouse to the left. But be sure you aren't holding on to anything when you do it, or you'll lose what you're holding and have to start again. While you're dragging the hardware through the tailpipe, be real careful not to touch the sides or anything that's moving. A ver qué tenemos aquí. Muy bien. Vamos allá. The only really interesting, relevant moment that happened in the Austrian Grand Prix was the moment when Kvyat torpedoed directly into uh, Fernando Alonso, taking out uh, Max Verstappen along with him. Not really that interesting, the whole race was rather actionless. Then came the the UK, which had a uh, old British driver Jolyon Palmer retire before the race even started because of a failure in his brakes. BPW failure. Brake pedal going long. What an awful feeling is that to have to pull out to the side of the track before the lights even go out to start the race. What a shame. And when the British Grand Prix came, Kvyat just torpedoed himself into Carlos Sainz, his own teammate. Sainz was out, and of course, as it tends to happen in these kinds of incidents, both drivers were blaming each other for the incident. Yeah, well, okay. You can tell Danny. He did a very good job there. He just turned it for me. Also, the British Grand Prix was the only home win in the entire season, being the winner, of course, Lewis Hamilton. And he shows love for the fans in his country. And what can I say about these fans? We've got the best fans here. Thank you, everyone who turned up. I see you out there. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. After the British Grand Prix came the Hungarian Grand Prix. And in Hungary, in the very first lap, Max Verstappen scored a takedown on his teammate. Someone hit me. Yeah, I'm still yeah. looking at it. Is that who I think it was? Yes. It's all over. He has a point. In fact, let's look at the crash from Lewis Hamilton's perspective. And that done, we can take care of level one, finally. Madre mía, que bueno eres. Hmm, lo que sospechaba. Tendrás que dejar la gasolina sin plomo. There were two incidents that Belgium will become absolutely infamous for. 
or at least go as infamous in the history books of Formula One. And it was a certain incident, or rather two incidents, between the Force India guys. Is the first of them where Perez basically bangs uh, Ocon against a wall. Um, essentially, this Haas was kind of blocking him and Perez kind of misjudged the gap. So yeah, he ended up hitting Ocon. And then a few laps later, he just ran into uh, Ocon. Half of Ocon's front wing just went away, but Perez came out rather unscathed, didn't he? At least he doesn't look to me like he's got a lot of damage. But let's look at it the good way. I mean, Ocon was very forgiving and kind about it and totally did not insult his teammates. Guys, what the f Honestly, what the f is this guy doing? Front wing broken now. And I do not want to betray my fellow Mexican, but that sexy French hunk has a point. I mean, what the bloody hell was Perez doing over there? And after Belgium, grab your favorite pasta and a, big, and a big plate of pizza, because we are going to look at the Grand Prix in Italia, where surprisingly, for some reason, Lance Stroll started second on the initial grid. But that's not the interesting part. The interesting part, well, one of them, was when Massa basically rammed accidentally into Max Verstappen with undesirable consequences. We have damage. Yeah, I think so. Fuck, fuck, Chef. Oh, what the f is he doing? And then came the Alonso and Palmer incident later. What Palmer is doing? He needs to give me back the position. Cut the chicken. Palmer has a five second penalty. Five seconds, it's a yoke. A joke. Yeah, we know Fernando. We, we can't do anything apart from give it everything, maximum pace. A few moments later. Um, where is Palmer? And Fernando Palmer has retired. Palmer. Let us admit it. That was really funny indeed. And well, let's admit it. Palmer is an incompetent idiot, so that was rather respected. Nervios de acero. No me extraña que fueras tan bueno en las carreras. Seguro que quieres sacar eso? Muy bien. Vamos allá. You know what's next? The great drama. The next race was in Singapore. Singapore. Oh, Singapore, you always start the races without incidents whatsoever, don't you? Two Ferraris were out, as was Max Verstappen and Fernando Alonso, and look at the damage in Vettel's car. Let's look at Verstappen's perspective. I got damage, got damage! Then Daniel Kvyat did a uh, Kvyat. And then the last crash was Marcus Eriksson who lost control of his car due to residual humidity on tarmac. Uh, well, he basically spun around and yep, he brought he sprang another safety car for a total of three safety cars in the race. As if the initial crash and Kvyat being Kvyat hadn't been enough. And then for the following race in Malaysia, no more vodka because Kvyat is out to be replaced with Pierre Gasly. Great move by Toro Rosso to replace the unhandsome and competent Russian with a more handsome, attractive Frenchman. And speaking of the French, Esteban Ocon had a bit of an incident with Carlos Sainz. During, during the race. Yeah, 
luckily none of the two cars were damaged and uh, Ocon could just finish the race as if nothing had happened. He just lost a few seconds from, you know, having to turn around after, you know, that little crash. And yeah, nothing really happened. He was unharmed, no damage to the car. He just has to turn around and get back to the track as if nothing had happened. No virtual safety car, no safety car, it was all calm. Or at least it was until after the chicken flag, when basically Vettel drove directly into Lance Stroll. And yes, both drivers were blaming each other. Stroll is not looking where he's going. He completely shunted into my car. My Vettel just ran right into the side of me. But Pascal Wehrlein was kind enough to give Vettel a little hitchhike back to the pit lane. And it was also a birthday weekend for Formula 1 because Max Verstappen, the winner of the race, had, had turned 20 years old the day previous to the race. Super, super job, uh, Max. That's really great drive. So, uh, welcome to being a 20-year-old. Great, uh, great start to a new decade for you. Well done. And a round of Thank you very much, Christian. That was great. And grab a piece of sushi because next race was in Japan where Carlos Sainz didn't quite end well his last race for Toro Rosso before he moved to Renault. He wound up in the wall, absolute disaster for the Spaniard. I'm really sorry guys, yes but for it didn't happen. It's okay Carlos, it's okay, I should have to close the race like this, but anyway, thank you for all this time. And Sebastian Vettel with a perfect pace. Absolutely no problems at all, nothing's going wrong, he's going to finish the race perfectly. Box Sebastian Box, wow. we retire the car, I'm afraid. Uh, actually he has a serious problems with his internal combustion engine, and he has to retire, and very much sacrificing his world championship, basically giving it as a gift to Lewis Hamilton. Wait a second, uh, Nico Hülkenberg isn't in the RS zone, why is it open? My, my DRS is stuck open, my DRS is stuck open. Oh. It doesn't close. Understood. And the pit crew tries to fix the DRS wing with very high technology. As uh, you might have guessed, it doesn't work, he had to retire. And then Lance Stroll having another very uh, embarrassing moment. Um, you might wonder, why the bloody hell is he drifting like this? Well, um, you may see those sparks over there. There's a good explanation for them. Um, it's a bit of a miracle that he didn't crash with the Red Bull there. It happens that his uh, front suspension snapped. And his front right tire has about as much pressure as my ass cheeks. I'm sorry Lance Stroll, but you'll have to retire and we'll have to get out of here. Let's go to round 17 in the land of Donald Trump, where unfortunately for the US Grand Prix, Pierre Gasly was away in Japan to run a race that unfortunately was cancelled due to a typhoon. So in the US, Daniel Kvyat ran instead in his last ever race so far. It was also the first time ever that Brendan Hartley starts a race and uh, the US Grand Prix had this little incident between Pascal Berlein and Kevin Magnussen. Where Basically, Magnussen was trying to overtake Verline and, well, got a little bit touchy-feely. A bit of a racing incident, not, not much to say about this. But, yeah, he's the first out of four in a row. Embarrassing races for uh, Daniel Ricciardo to finish up this season. His engine was basically gone. He just lost power at that particular corner. Engine's gone. Engine's gone. Karma for giving Magnuson a few laps later. 
turns out that Marcus Eriksson can also get a little bit touchy-feely when overtaking. <laughs> Although that was not exactly a racing incident, it... Well, probably not. Or... You judge. But... Yeah, basically that was a touch and uh, Magnussen lost control of his car. You know, that... That spin. Very common, very common. That's probably the most common type of accident. And... Yeah, that's basically what happened. And... You may remember this little moment. An overtaking in the last lap made by Max Verstappen over Kimi Raikkonen. Sure, everyone will agree that uh, overtake was done legally and it was absolutely amazing, right? No, actually the stewards disagree. And now I get the joke why some people say that the FIA is just Ferrari International Assistance. But let's admit it, we all know why that happened. Any Mexican will know exactly why that penalty happened, but what about you, Max? Uh, do you know why that penalty was given to you? Because I'm Dutch. Exactly, because you're Dutch. And exactly, that was an unjustified penalty. But an also unjustified penalty was this little incident in the 2014 uh, World Cup where Arjen Robben caused the penalty that got uh, Mexico out of the World Cup. So consider that karma, won't you? And I know what you're thinking. That this penalty is one more reason why the US is a country of idiots. But since the amount of reasons is just shy of 63 million already, that barely makes it end. Now put away your yellow wig because we will not pay for that wall. Let us take a look at the, the infamous incident in the Mexico Grand Prix where Vettel basically rammed himself into uh, Lewis Hamilton causing a puncture. And in that race, five cars retired, one of them was uh, Daniel Ricciardo, but the most relevant was Brendan Hartley, being the only driver to bring out a virtual safety car, because his car just set on fire. Right, I'm losing a lot of power. Stop the car, Brendan. Stop the car in a safe place. Stop the car. Also, the highlight of the Mexican Grand Prix was that Vettel was unable to keep up with the pace and get to second place, which means that Lewis Hamilton got the World Championship. Congratulations to Lewis Hamilton and cue the montage! Second to last race in Brazil, in the Italago circuit, where Lewis Hamilton, because of a engine failure in qualifying, started from the pit lane. First lap, first drama, there's Daniel Ricciardo. Oops. He had a bit of an incident with uh, Stoffel van Dorn and um, Kevin Magnussen. Uh, Fortunately, he was relatively unharmed. He was able to finish the race. Uh, Van Dorn was also unharmed, right? He was totally not turned into a sandwich. Uh, I got, I got squeezed. Copy. Is the car okay? No! 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 And here's Romain Grosjean, who is presumably jealous of his more attractive fellow Frenchman and to try to kill him, or at least make him less attractive, or whatever, he smashes him. That's what jealousy can do. Right there. Exactly. What a shame. Instead of, you know, 
getting plastic surgery or makeup or shaving that horrendous or horrible beard that Roman has, simply smashing Ocon will fix it and damaging his car severely. Right? I don't think so, but at least Roman Grosjean was very aware that he did wrong, right? Fox now, Roman, Fox now, we have a second penalty, Fox now. For what? From the Ocon incident, they put this on You must be kidding me. You must be kidding me. Yeah. Oh, and look at Lance Stroll! That is some severe case of tired elimination! How that happened, I have no idea, and uh, honestly, I want to know what is uh, what causes that type of tired elimination, but seriously, that needs some serious fix! Ouch! And now for the main highlight of the Brazilian Grand Prix! where somehow Felipe Massa's son got access to a transponder. How? I have no idea, but what came next was very cute indeed. Daddy, I'm so proud of you, and wherever you go, I will support you. I love you. By the way, I love your start. Last race in Abu Dhabi, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, where we had incidents like Kevin Magnussen and Pierre Gasly losing control of their cars in the most hilarious fashion. Don't worry, none of them had to retire. But that was not the case for Daniel Ricciardo, who had a terrible engine failure, his third retirement in the last four races of the season. Kind of an embarrassing way to finish the season, isn't it? Okay, mate. We've got a hydraulic problem. We're gonna go mode one and switch off, mate. Sorry about that. At least uh, another driver, Carlos Sainz, got it absolutely perfect. Or did he? I mean... It seems like something went wrong, uh, he just came out of the pit, so what could be going wrong with Carlos Sainz? Turns out one of the tires was not secured properly, and it was pretty much getting out of place. Yeah, one tire is not on. One tire is off. Okay, take a step, stop the car, stop the car please. Good effort guys. Uh, it was coming like a nice one for the shape. Exactly. Too bad, too bad he had to retire from the race. Embarrassingly. Uh, here's the pet stop. You see how this tire is not really put properly. The wheel nut isn't secure the way it should. And so it's already wobbling. Causing problems already getting out of the pit lane. He could have uh, stopped there, but he would have caused many problems for, you know, the next uh, driver who was trying to get out of the pit lane. So, yeah, not really an option. Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton winning the very last race of the 2017 season. And of course, those fireworks to celebrate. And the latter part of the season was absolutely dominated by the Mercedes team. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So well managed. Very well done, Dante. Yes! Hablando de rapidez, qué bien. Acabas de abrir un nuevo secreto de carreras legendarias. We'll definitely be able to beat that. And uh, let's take a look at my top five teams from this season. I think it was uh, number five Williams, number four Force India, number three Red Bull, number two Ferrari, and number one Mercedes, of course. Toma ya, has ganado la carrera. Because they were the champions, obviously. Sí. And of course, not all drivers that entered this season will start the un the new one. Uh, for the 2018 season, Pascal Wehrlein will be replaced by Charles Leclerc. And Felipe Massa 
Oh, Williams will be replaced by Sergei Sirotkin. Love him or hate him, I've got one word for it. Vodka. This marks the end of a wonderful season and a wonderful throwback, I guess. And... Well, you know what what follows. Of course, I made a little bit of mistakes over there. Um, let's just look at the location for photo that we unlocked on the game. And you can take your screenshots. Great. Great, you've taken your screenshots. Now, um, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another video.